Good morning. Good morning all. A warm welcome to Surya Pet Khammam Bioscience online class. Myself, Kausar Anjum, working as TGT Science in TS Model School, Imam Pet Village, Surya Pet Mandal and District. Children, today I am here with the topic Mechanism of Urine Formation. So here, uh, what are the learning outcomes we will see now? After completion of my class, you will come to know the number of stages in the mechanism of respiration and uh, you will come to know and you will analyze the difference between urine and primary urine and you will get the knowledge on the products which are useful to us and which are harmful to us. You can explain how urine gets concentrated and at last you can give reason why excretion of diluted e urine from a person body is happened. Why a person excretes diluted urine. So let's begin our session that is mechanism of urine formation. Okay. So here I'll begin this session with a question called as what is urine? Children, from your early childhood, from your early childhood, you are listening the term urine. So if I ask you what is urine, your answer will be uh, urine is a liquid which is pale yellow in color, isn't it? But if you see the composition, it is uh, definitely it is liquid part, which, which means it has water. So along with the water, what more are present means some organic substances are present and some inorganic substances are present. So these uh, organic, inorganic substances along with the water is combinedly called as urine. So is this useful to us urine means? No. Uh, daily we take food and water. When that will get uh, processed, uh, the undigested food will be produced, excess salts will be produced and uh, if water is extra to our body then that is also uh, is present. Then all these excess substances, excess uh, undigested food is eliminated through digestive system but excess salts and excess water which are present in our body are taken by the blood and this blood when it comes to kidneys, kidneys get, kidneys filter the blood and uh, that uh, filtered uh, blood, when the blood get filtered then the urine is formed. So what is urine? Urine is uh, uh, nothing but a composition of excess organic substances, excess inorganic substances and excess water which is uh, extracted from the blood by the kidneys. Okay. Now once I recapitulate the structure of nephron. In previous session you have come across the structure of nephron but once I will briefly uh, uh, recapitulate it for you. See here, this is a nephron. Nephron is the structural and functional unit of kidneys. Kidneys have its structure because of nephron. Kidneys are functioning because of nephron. So because of nephron only, kidneys are able to filter the blood. So if we see the structure of nephron, this nephron has one cup-like structure. There is a cup-like structure and there will be a long coiled tube. So here this cup-like structure is called as Bowman's capsule and in this cup-like structure there will be a bunch of, there will be a group of fine blood capillaries. There will be a group of or bunch of fine blood capillaries. If you observe here, one blood capillary is getting into the Bowman's capsule and one blood capillary is going out of Bowman's capsule. So here, these bunch of blood capillaries makes glomerulus. Okay, so there is a Bowman's capsule and there is glomerulus. So these, these glomerulus along with the Bowman's capsule is called as a Malfigian capsule or Malfigian body. Now, this Bowman's capsule leads to a long coiled tube. So here this tube is again divided into three regions. This first region which is coiled is called as proximal convoluted tube. 
proximal convoluted tube so proximal meaning what is the meaning of proximal means first it is situated in the anterior for first region attached to the first uh, to the bowman's capsule convoluted means which is twisted which is coiled as it is situated in the first region of the attached to the bowman's capsule and as it is twisted it is called as proximal convoluted tube and after that and after that there is there is one uh, hair like hairpin like structure this hairpin like structure is called as loop of henle and again this loop of henle leads to one more coiled structure this is the third region which is called as a distal convoluted tube distal means last convoluted means which has twist or which has coils so first there is a cup like structure called as bowman's capsule in this bowman's capsule there is glomerulus glomerulus along with this bowman's capsule is called as malpighian body this bowman's capsule leads to a coiled tube this coiled tube is divided into three regions the first region is called as proximal convoluted tube the next tube the next region of the tube is called as loop of henle and the last part of the coiled tube last last but one is called as a distal convoluted tube and this distal convoluted tube leads to the final part of the nephron which is called as collecting tubule okay so there are how many parts children major parts are two parts one is a cup like structure which is malpighian body and a long tube okay i hope you have understood this nephron structure now we will enter into our main topic that is mechanism of urine formation uh in uh, chapter 2 respiration i have explained you the term mechanism mechanism means what involvement of few parts moving of few parts in an order to bring out a function that is called as mechanism so here urine formation is a uh, urine formation is a function formation of urine is a function to bring out this u formation of urine uh, some parts are involved so what parts are involved kidneys are involved ureters urinary bladder okay so these parts these parts will move in an order to bring out the function which is called as urine formation so it is called as mechanism so in this mechanism of urine formation there are four stages okay the first stage is glomerular filtration the first stage is glomerular filtration the second stage is tubular reabsorption tubular reabsorption the third stage is tubular secretion what is the third stage tubular secretion and the fourth stage is formation of hypertonic urine formation of hypertonic urine so there are totally four stages in the mechanism of formation of urine here children if you understand the terms properly you it is very easy to remember this mechanism so glomerular so first we will see the first stage that is glomerular filtration you observe this figure properly children here this is the cup like structure which is called as bowman's capsule and this uh, uh, in the, the this part which is accommodated in the bowman's capsule is called as glomerulus i said you there will be uh, the glomerulus is formed by fine blood capillaries so what are those fine blood capillaries means uh, i said you again that one blood vessel enter into the bowman's capsule and one blood vessel leaves the bowman's capsule the blood vessel which enters into the bowman's capsule is called as efferent arteriole and the blood vessel which leaves the bowman's capsule is called as efferent arteriole efferent means incoming efferent means outgoing incoming and outgoing so if you, and you have to observe this carefully here efferent arteriole is wider in diameter than efferent arteriole efferent arteriole is narrower efferent arteriole is wider so what is why there is a structural difference means the row this is arteriole i said means artery it is an artery what is the role of artery artery brings the blood from heart to any body part here the body part is 
kidneys okay so here the uh, artery gets the blood from heart to the uh, kidney that is into the nephron so when the blood is pumped by the heart the blood contains so many impurities excess water is present excess salts are present so the blood with the excess water and salts comes into the nephron by means of efferent arteriole and uh, it enters into the these uh, blood capillaries and finally it uh, uh, wants to leave the bowman's capsule but there is a diameter difference isn't it so when you, you take a water pipe and when you uh, when you uh, decrease the water uh, and when you decrease the diameter of the water pipe what happens the water which is coming out of the pipe will get uh, more pressurized it will come very it uh, uh, rushes out isn't it in the same way here when the blood comes the blood comes with the normal pressure but when the blood reaches to efferent arteriole the as the diameter is very less the pressure the blood undergoes pressurized because of this pressurized blood because of this pressure what happens uh, the blood uh, which contains the impurities comes out these you can see the arrow marks here this shows the blood is coming out of these arteries and the blood is entering into the bowman's capsule so here children once again i'll recapitulate what is blood the blood is nothing but a composition of solid part and the liquid part a liquid part is plasma and solid part are the cells uh, can i said the blood is coming out of the uh, arteries blood in the sense the solid substances the those the blood cells cannot come out of these blood vessels that means what is coming out of these blood vessels means only the plasma the plasma contains all the uh, organic and inorganic substances which are uh, which are uh, which i said impurities so here the blood along with the organic and inorganic substances enters into the bowman's capsule by means of efferent arteriole and a pressure is created here because the uh, diameter of efferent arteriole is very less because of that pressure what happens the blood cells will remain in the artery but the plasma will come out the plasma which is coming out will be taken up by this bowman's capsule okay so here this plasma which is coming out of the artery arteriole is called as the filtrate is called as a primary urine the filtrate means which got filtered the blood which has entered into the blood vessel got filtered here and the filtered blood is called as filtrate the filtrate enters into the bowman's capsule and from the bowman's capsule it reaches into the tubule i said uh, first there will be a cup like structure called as bowman's capsule later a long coiled tube is present so the uh, filtrate which is uh, coming out here enters into the bowman's capsule and enters into the tubule here uh, see here children the filtrate which is coming out of the bowman's capsule is called as primary urine primary urine i said i, I have uh, uh, in learning outcomes i have given one point after my class you can uh, explain uh, the difference between urine and primary urine uh, so what is primary urine means it is as it is like blood but there will be no blood cells primary urine is nothing but blood but there will be no blood cells that means what is present only plasma is present in plasma what are present means organic substances will be present inorganic substances will be present and water will be there so this is called as primary urine so once we will have recapitulation of glomerular filtration so blood flows inside the glomerulus through efferent arteriole and blood leaves the glomerulus through efferent arteriole efferent means what incoming efferent means what outgoing and uh, after uh, entering of the blood the blood gets filtered where the blood gets filtered in the glomerulus why the blood gets filtered due to difference in the diameter of efferent and efferent arterioles okay efferent arteriole is wider than efferent arteriole isn't it yes the filtration done by glomerulus is called ultra filtration means uh, very very fine filtration okay 
and the filtrate the after filtration what is formed filtrate is formed so that filtrate is called as what primary urine i hope you have understood the first stage glomerular filtration this stage describes how filtration of blood is seen is occurred in the glomerulus the next stage is tubular reabsorption so first filtrate has formed tubular reabsorption reabsorption that means again the filtrate is absorbed re means again absorbed so first this part here nephron has a cup like structure called as bowman's capsule then there will be a long tube isn't it and uh, there will be around these this tube there will be a network of blood vessels are present these are called as peritubular network peritubular network peri means all round are these tubules present all round yes peritubular network is present around this a uh, proximal convoluted tube loop of henle and distal convoluted tube so tubular reabsorption how the reabsorption occurs the peritubular capillaries these are the all round present capillaries which uh, get which uh, reabsorbs first here the blood got filtered and primary urine is formed the primary urine enters into the proximal convoluted tube next enters into the loop of henle and later enters into the distant convoluted tube so but around this coiled tube there will there are there are blood vessels is it a blood capillaries so these blood capillaries will reabsorb what the reabsorb means uh, the substances which are present in the primary urine such as glucose amino acids vitamin c potassium calcium sodium chloride and 75% of water will get reabsorbed from the primary urine so first stage is glomerular filtration where the primary urine is formed second stage is tubular reabsorption that means from the primary urine again the reabsorption is done uh, so what uh, substances are reabsorbed means these all are the substances which are reabsorbed okay along with the water next coming to the third stage what is the third stage children tubular secretion secretion means releasing first blood get got filtered then so many substances that is primary urine is formed in that primary urine uh, excess water is present excess salts are present if those are again required it will get reabsorbed again after reabsorption if our body feels if the nephron feels these are extra these are extra what we have absorbed is extra again get secreted again get released so the third stage is tubular secretion so here it is the active secretion of waste products by blood capillaries blood capillaries reabsorbs all most of the substances along with water again gets released if those are excess into the tubule so it removes into the urinary tubule so these blood vessels what they will do they will release again those extra substances into the tubule these tubules again bring those extra substances to um, uh, to its uh, uh, further regions it removes all the waste products from the blood like so what are the waste products that will be secreted urea uric acid creatinine salt salt ions what type of salt ions are present means k in the sense potassium na in the sense sodium and h plus ions means hydrogen ions these all are again secreted into the uh, renal tubule so renal tubule means what proximal convoluted tube loop of henle and distal convoluted tube along with the collecting tubule also so renal tubule it will be again secreted so the first uh, uh, step is glomerular filtration where the prime blood gets filtered and primary urine is formed second uh, stage is tubular reabsorption where the excess water and excess salts or other uh, important substances are reabsorbed by the blood capillaries and third stage is tubular secretion what the capillaries have absorbed uh, are for example if are those are more then again it must be secreted where it must be secreted means into the renal tubule 
these blood vessels will secrete those substances into renal tubule so this is the third stage that is renal secretion and now we will see the last step that is formation of hypertonic urine so hypertonic here this is a new word hypertonic in the sense concentrated concentrated diluted concentrated diluted means which is like watery uh, concentrated means which is somewhat uh, uh, thick which in wind where uh, less water is present but more salts are present diluted means more water is present but less salts are present so la and finally there will be hypertonic uh, so urine is formed that means concentrated urine is formed to make it concentrated hypertonic means concentrated that means less water is present more salts are present okay now what we have to do in the final stage we have to decrease the quantity of water and we have to increase the quantity of salts that means water must get reabsorbed so that the water level can be decreased so how the in which region the water quantity is decreased means uh, 75% of the water quantity is reabsorbed in the first uh, coiled part of the renal tubule that is proximal convoluted tube in the first proximal convoluted tube 75% of water is reabsorbed and 10% per percent of water is reabsorbed or uh, released into the tubules by means uh, by here in the loop of henle 10% water from the filtrate that means primary urine enters into the loop of henle region okay so how by which process it gets uh, entered means by means of osmosis what is osmosis moving of ions from lower concentration to higher concentration is called as through semi permeable membrane is called as osmosis so here how the water is uh, uh, decreased how the urine is made concentrated means by the reabsorption of water 75% of water is reabsorbed in the uh, proximal convoluted tube 10% water is reabsorbed or enter into the uh, blood capillaries uh, by means of osmosis process in the loop of henle region and uh, for when the further when the pri urine pri that uh, filtrate enters into the last region of the renal tubule called as collecting tubule here the final concentration that means uh, uh, much concentrated concentration of urine is formed because of secretion of the hormone called as vasopressin because of the presence of or release of vasopressin the hormone the final finally the urine becomes concentrated okay so first the concentration of urine occurs in the proximal convoluted tube that is nearly 75% of water is reabsorbed and the 10% of water is uh, uh, reabsorbed in the loop of henle region and enters into the uh, these uh, tubules of this uh, blood vessels by means of osmosis process 10% of water is reabsorbed okay next finally uh, further concentration occurs in this last tubule of the nephron that is called as uh, collecting tubule what is present here in the collecting tubule means here vasopressin the hormone is released which makes the diluted urine to concentrated okay i hope you have understood this last stage also so the mechanism of urine formation is divided into four four stages the first is glomerular filtration second is tubular reabsorption third is tubular secretion and fourth is formation of hypertonic urine this hypertonic urine is formed because of in the presence of which hormone in the presence of the hormone called as vasopressin so here what is vasopressin vasopressin is a hormone which makes the urine concentrated okay and uh, now i'll tell you one uh, new uh, about a disease i will discuss about a disease that is called as diabetes insipidus you have uh, listened you have come across about uh, in the about the diabetes mellitus which we commonly called as sugar isn't it uh, that is uh, the which occurs because of lack of insulin but here i am uh, telling about diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus means what it is a condition in which persons lack lack in the sense they don't have 
they don't have the release of vasopressin which leads to release of diluted urine see here children i said you uh, vasopressin in the presence of vasopressin only the urine becomes concentrated if there is no vasopressin can the urine becomes concentrated no the urine cannot become concentrated and it remains diluted diluted means more quantity of water is present okay so in some persons because of some condi health conditions vasopressin hormone is not released or uh, are is released in very very less quantities then what happens those persons cannot release concentrated urine then the, what happens they will release only diluted urine that condition of the person that health situation of the person is called as diabetes insipidus so generally how much is urine is ex excreted by the person in the absence of vasopressin means nearly 15 liters of urine generally children we uh, uh, release 1.5 liters to 2 liters of urine the normal healthy person releases 1.5 to 2 uh, liters of urine uh, every day but this is uh, because of vasopressin if vasopressin is not present how much urine is excreted by the person means 15 liters of the urine is excreted by the person in whom there is no vasopressin or in whom there is no release of vasopressin i hope you have understood what is vasopressin and what is the importance of vasopressin in our uh, in our body in the process of excretion so now it is a final thing uh, that is it is a time for evaluation so uh, here the first question is what is urine urine is a mixture of organic substances in organic substances and water which are excess to our body okay next is name the stages involved in the mechanism of urine formation there are four stages in the mechanism of urine formation the first is glomerular filtration second is tubular reabsorption third is tubular secretion and the fourth is formation of concentrated urine and third question is what is primary urine primary urine is nothing but it is the, the composition the which the blood has except blood cells that means the primary urine is a filtrate which is formed by the glomerulus after filtering the blood its composition is as it is like blood but there will be no blood cells and the fourth question what is ultra filtration ultra filtration means uh, the filtration which is done by the glomerulus because of the difference in between uh, the diameters of efferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole and the fifth question is uh, name the products found in the urine again what is urine the same you can write here or you can write in detail uh, that is uh, organic substances means glucose amino acids okay and in organic substances means potassium uh, it has sodium uh, and it has chlorides isn't it and along with the water and sixth question is why the efferent arteriole is wider than efferent arteriole means why it is pre present means in order to bring out the filtration of blood then only when the blood gets filtered then only the primary urine is formed then later the uh, actual urine is formed next how urine becomes concentrated first uh, the process of uh, making urine concentrated begins in the pct that is proximal convoluted tube 75% of the water gets uh, reabsorbed in the pct 10% is is uh, reabsorbed or it uh, moves into the further tubules uh, adjacent tubules by me in the region of loop of henle and further concentration is occurred in the region of collecting tubule in the presence of vasopressin and uh, last question what is diabetes insipidus it is the condition in which the human being cannot produce vasopressin due to the presence of vasopressin the urine cannot uh, cannot turn into concentrated and the person excretes diluted urine so excretion of diluted urine in the absence of vasopressin is called as 
that such a condition in the person is called as diabetes insipidus okay children so i hope you have understood today's class once go through the content which is present in the textbook and try to answer these questions again on your own okay thank you uh, i meet you soon in the next class with the new topic